Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Urban Legends, the internet podcast about urban legends and loosely similar topics. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Chris Flynn, and with me, as always, is Mr. Neil Herbert. How you doing? Hi, Neil. How are you doing? I'm all right. It's only been a couple yeah. of days. Yes, we recorded a late one last week. Well, last week, this week, anyway, yeah. Yeah. So, um, anything... this goes out, it will have been last week. Very confusing. It is confusing, isn't it? Um, on yeah. a wild, a wildly um, random recording Erratic schedules. Recording schedules, yeah. Um, Neil, do you want uh, do you want a little tip um, about dealing Ooh, with why not? dealing with life? <laughs> so, um, because there's like you know, like the world's a very very confusing, angry place at the moment. So, what mm-hmm. I like to do is. Um, I like to sort of put it in, I, I put it into kind of a fantasy world. Okay. So, um, you know, when you hear like Yemen and the Houthis, mm-hmm. I think of, I like to think of them as a ska band from Jamaica from the 60s, it's Yemen and the like Houthis. Yeah. And it's, and then it's, then it's like, it's a bit, you know, it's a bit more fun. You can go, oh, I bet they're good. Like, did they do any stuff, you know? That, that I would remember if I listened to it, because obviously there's a lot of uh, 60s ska music in, in London if you grow up there, which mm. I you know, did did for a time. So, yeah, you know, like that, just, just um, I believe it's called Reframe It. Nice. With, it's a lot of, talking of ska, this would do, do a ska revival, I would imagine. I hope so. It was so. Big, big in the 90s, wasn't it? And then it's well, that was kind of ska, cycle. sort of ska punk, wasn't it? Yeah. But, you know. Sublime, that kind of thing. No Real doubt. big fish. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, do you know what? I wouldn't mind it. I'd like it if um, if it came out of like Jamaica or London or something or New York rather than sort of whatever. No doubt are and rather yeah, than no California, idea. I guess. I'm, I'm assuming so. Yeah. Um, do you like the band Sublime? I don't I like know too much about them to be honest with Is you. It's called Santeria. That's okay. Quite... Yeah. No, I don't... I'm trying to think who the oh, Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. That's the one that I think would be. A... I have no idea where they're from. Ray, do you love them? Do you? I don't do love you, them. Um, I think they did a couple of all right songs. Yeah, I reckon maybe a two tone revival, which was kind two-tone of would like. Be good. No, I mean, if you look at talk, talking about, I mean, it's not Scar, is it? But um, like Ghost Town by the Specials. The oh, Specials, brilliant song. Specials yeah. are really good. I mean, Specials I are amazing. I don't know what technically you're calling that. Two tone Scar. It's two tone, yeah. Yeah. I thought two tone was more the movement, but um, yeah, no, I'd... yeah, the movement of two tone. Just um, so people not from the UK or not old, no. So in the late seventies, early eighties, yeah. So two tone, um, because there was like, I guess, it was a late seventies was quite a fractious time, wasn't it? In the UK, there was a lot of industrial unrest, that kind of thing. But there's also yeah. kind of like ra- racism problems, and what two tone was was a it was kind of like, um, it was kind of like scar based sort of Jamaican based kind of band music. It was kind of like a little punky, I guess, as well. Well, yeah, but it was, where, you know, kind of like working class bands who would be, you yeah. know, wanted to be, you know, and the bands would be mixed. kind of um, would be would be uh, mixed race, and so yeah. would the crowds, and everyone just all got on, and um, you know that that kind of spilled over into the charts and into the culture and stuff as well. It's kind of like a, I would say, a pretty positive movement in general. Two tone, and that's where probably Madness came out of that. Although they yeah. weren't particularly big space, but well, it, all got, it all got fairly commercial, didn't it? Like you before you and Madness and all that. Yeah. Or you had, um, you know, I mean, I was, you know, why is why is um, Sting singing in a Jamaican accent on his The Police songs because he's because from because Kingston. It's all inspired by, yeah, that's true. But yeah, he got inspired by the kind of music, obviously, and you know. Bob Marley was massive in the sort of late seventies, early eighties as well, wasn't it? Well, that's the question. Like, that's the question you you often get in pub quizzes, isn't it? Like, who? Like, what are they? According to polls, who are the three most famous Jamaicans? Jimmy Cliff, Bob Marley, number one, Sting. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He just he moved to Newcastle. He moved, in he his, moved to in Newcastle. His, to become a teacher. Hey, mate, what you taking photos of, you pervert? All right, then. Don't worry about it. Have a nice day. That's how they talk in Newcastle. Yeah. You're still um, so close to me. <laughs> <Don't>... Can't be loud. <laughs> Roxanne, don't, don't be gunny putting out your red light, like. Um, Cool. Um, so, Neil, I haven't got a lot of... 
I mean, I've got I've got some nonsense to talk, but but not much really because we haven't had a lot of time in between. So I think maybe let's just because obviously we're known as it. we're we're known as a very slick operation with no fat on the bone. Yeah. Uh, as a podcast, it's just in information out. So I think <laughs> uh, I think we should yeah, um, we should. We, we should uh, we should crack on. What what we're we looking at today is it is it is it anything to do with um, Putin? Because I call him that. Because then when I hear Putin's attacking Ukraine, then I think of the Canadian dish with chips, with cheese and uh, cheese curds and gravy on it. And Isn't I think Putin. Oh, Putin, yeah, that's yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I think is attacking Putin, Ukraine. Putin, in my, I think it's French. In my or, reframing or, of the world, that's either, either works. Oh, fair enough. Um, yeah, I just, ima- I just imagine like a large mound of them, like the blob. <laughs> I've never had them, but they sound the, quite delicious. nice. Is it like huh? cheese curds, chips and yeah. gravy? Yeah. Mm. It sounds all right to me. Yeah. Um, I, I know that, that people in America go, Ugh, but, you know, mm. it's pretty cheese, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so what are we looking at today, Neil? Liquid cheese. Iki cherub. The uh, popper bower. Popper bower. Well, the bat wing from... Um, it's a. Uh, I don't think is it Zanzibar or Tanzania. It's um, Tanzania, oh, I think. Part Zanzibar is part of Tanzania, isn't it? Yeah, on the west coast. Uh, yeah, the Zanzibar Islands are off there. Yeah, because the article I've got is from the, from the Brooklyn Paranormal Society. It's it's from. Um, I, th- I think it's generally around Tanzania. Actually, I'm saying mm-hmm. it's from the article I've got here is describing it as being from Zanzibar Islands. Anyway, it's all part of Tanzania. Um, yeah, very beautiful. Ten, um, very beautiful uh, Zanzibar now. Like, it's got a checkered past, but now it's like a tropical paradise. It'd be long mm, I know there. somebody went on holiday in Zanzibar. They really rated it, recommended yeah, it. Yeah, it looks really lovely. I'm Maybe one day. Yeah, I, yeah no, I, I figured it you know, might be a bit hot for me because I'm, I'm terrible just, with just don't go in the Just don't you go just in. You just go at the right season. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's yeah. in the southern hemisphere, so you could, if you went in our summer, it would be there winter, so it would be all right. But, Neil... You know, do be careful of the old cyclones. But, you know, with climate change, Chris. Yeah. That's true. Is it ever, you know? Anyway. So, Papa Bow. What, Papa Bow. What, is, yeah. what is it? So, it's basically, I mean, there's no kind of... I'm trying to... I'm trying not to dive into this, because it's... Um, so, it's, it's, a, it's a sort of monster creature... Okay. It's a bit of folklore from Tanzania. And, um, well, I'll, I'll go with the, the intro, actually. They, they probably put it about as well as you can put it. Okay. Um, it's got an interesting little, um, yeah. With, so the Pobara is a creature from folklore on the Zanzibar Islands, located off the coast of Tanzania and Africa. So, yeah, no, I think you credit this is the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Paranormal Society. Um, the creature has been feared and spoken about for decades, and it's described as having the characteristics of a cyclops dwarf, so a one eye, <laughs> quite short, um, yeah. with black like wings and ears. I mean, cool. Papa Bauer, Papa Bauer, rather, um, I believe that's Swahili for bat wing, which mm-hmm. is kind of like the, the noise that's made. As which was, the um, that's who Robin became, wasn't it, in Batman? I After believe After he so, left yeah. and they got a new Robin. I think it's Darkwing, but we could say Batwing. Yeah, whatever. I'm not, I'm not whatever. that invested in... DC Comics, generally. Yeah. I kind of read some of it when I was a kid, but, um, like, keeping up with all of the, the lore and stuff, I just... Ugh. I mean, how it's, a nice, it's, oh, it's like another job, isn't it? It's like, a, it's like a full-time job trying to keep up with Batman and his um, mm. wards. Yeah. Well, I think it literally <laughs> has been going on for, like, 100 years now, hasn't it? More or less. What was it the 30s yeah, they well, started, pretty much? Yeah, maybe. 20, yeah, I don't know, whatever. I don't know. Well, yeah, maybe 40s, I don't know. I think, yeah, because wasn't Superman a sort of like response to, yeah, it would have been in the 30s because it's like a response to, you know, Hitler and all of that, wasn't it? Um, right. Did you, um, do you remember the uh, Superman cartoon where they had like, Superman faster than a speeding bullet? Oh, no, you, I, I didn't than until you said that. And it's just put something, I was thinking of the Spider Man one instead. In the so, 70s, um, which was kind of terrible, but fun. So, in the UK, we only got like a uh, cut version of it 
like so the the intro it's like scene. more violent or something. Mm-hmm. No, so it was a much longer intro scene. So oh, okay. we only got like faster than like like more faster than a speed bullet, more powerful than yeah. locomotive. I've seen on YouTube the, the kind of full version of it, the full okay. version, and there's some interesting things that they said that he was more than. So uh, they said he was stronger than a river. Stronger than a river. That's quite, quite yeah. strange, isn't it? They said he was sassier. They said he was sassier than Carla from Cheers. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> sassier than Carla from Cheers. They said it. they said he's he was better in bed than your dad. <laughs> so it's kind of like mm. I could see why they cut some of it out, really, to be honest. And um, more agile than a lemur, apparently. So mm. yeah, I mean, but like they had to cut it so it would fit into our Saturday morning schedule. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. It's a bit like when yeah when when we send shows over there, they need to put adverts in. So that's it. Yeah. So they cut they cut, cut out sound. like. Yeah, they cut out the second act. <laughs> yeah, it's cut out some of the jokes, it'll be fine. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's like a you know, bat like wings and air shot talons, and a nasty habit of sodomizing men while they sleep in their beds. That is a nasty habit. Yeah. You shouldn't be snooze juicing. <laughs> well, if it's consensual, there's nothing, you know. Well, yeah, is, but, but it doesn't. I think I think they're implying that it isn't. No, I think it's very much non-consensual. So yeah, it's um, yeah, it's. I suppose this is the thing, isn't it? That with our increase in the unrealistic beauty standards, if you're a well, how's, how's, psych- it, how's psychoptic, a bat creature supposed to get psychoptic yeah. dwarf bat creature? Are we sticking yeah. up for Papa Bauer incels now. Is that what we're, is that what we're doing? <laughs> of all, think, all the controversial positions we've taken. I think we've finally found the direction of the podcast. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 wild a wild celebrate. right swing in yeah. the middle of middle of series six. We finally cracked it. Yeah. That's how we made our money. But you know, oh, he's yeah. not gonna he's not gonna get like he's not gonna get likes and grinder and stuff, is he? But he's still got still got needs. But I I don't agree with what he's doing. No. But what I would I'd say, say is may, maybe we need to look at Maybe we need to look at things more holistically. Okay. Look at society in the round. Yeah, I mean, you know. You know, why, why, why is society creating these popper bowers who are... Well, I think he's got, he needs to work on himself as well, Chris, to be honest with you. He's got some, you know, you some behaviour adjustments that he needs to make. <laughs> um, I, would, I, would, I would argue maybe spend some time, you know, some quality time working on yourself. And yeah, you, maybe your get, self-esteem. Maybe get, like, um, a fashionable Pop-a-bower. haircut, like a, like a pompadour. Well, you know, you just don't have to don't have to completely change yourself, but you know, just you know, work okay. on yourself a bit, Papa Bow, would be right. Anyway, the Papa Bow, whose name is derived from the Swahili words for bat and wing, yep, yeah, so that's mm-hmm. that was true. First appeared in the neighbouring island of Pember in nineteen seventy two. I mean I've seen other sources that say it comes back to the sixties, but it's quite a recent one. Yeah, really <laughs> really recent. <laughs> but or... you say you say this, but Ch- uh, Chapacubra or whatever it's called. Chupacabra. Chupacabra, thank you. That's sunny for the nineties. That started, oh. so you know. There we go. Hey, hey. Yep. But this is quite an interesting one. We'll, we'll get into this a little bit later on. Um, well, the thing is, like these things have to, you know, like these creatures have to um, mutate at some point, don't they? And there's no reason to believe that it's not happening all the time. Well, there is that. It's also kind of like um, there's a lot of talk about it feeds into kind of modern anxieties of Tanzanians. Yeah. And there's also some talk around. I mean, we'll come to again come to this a bit later on, but. It's kind of can be used um, for people who are, um, you know, because it's quite a strict Muslim country, Tanzania apparently. Yeah. Um, again, don't, don't know all of the facts here. We're just reading around some sources. This is what's being claimed. yeah. It used to be a part of the Sultanate yeah. back yeah, in so, the, um, by the I think the Jum Jumun Sultanate. I think from yeah. my memory. So you know, there's this you know, so certain certain groups of society are able to kind of kind of use this to get into. Um, you know, having conversations that wouldn't wouldn't normally be sort of you wouldn't normally be able to have openly in in, in kind of society. Um, but we'll get onto that a little bit. Anyway, let's let's talk about the actual mythical creature first, and then we'll sort of get onto the other theories, um, edges around the legend. So it's first appeared in Oberon of Pembroke twenty two. At that time, several residents reported being awakened by a strange acrid smell and then a puff of smoke in their bedrooms. Mm. It's Chet Hayes, Tom Hanks's son, like a joint <laughs> record. Oh, do you reckon? Pop round for a nocturnal visit. You Is know he... how um, Bill Murray like goes around and does the washing up in people's houses and stuff and parties. Have you ever heard about? No, what has he got? He's dementia? been a wacky little character. All right. I reckon Chet Hayes do stuff like that. 
Who's Chet Hay? Chet Hayes. Who's that? Have you not heard Tom... of this guy? It's um, Tom, one of Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks got like a couple of kids, as far as I know. Right. I think it's two boys. You might, I might have more, I don't know. And one of them became like a reasonably well-known actor, well, reasonably respected actor. I think he's Colin mm. Hanks. He's been in like a Dexter series and things like that. He's quite low-key, but he's really good with God as an all right actor. And the other one became uh, a rapper. Oh, nice. With Chet Hayes. Okay. Chet Hayes. And he, and he quite enjoys marijuana, Chris. Does he? Right, does, he, men- does he, he mention it in his raps? And, I believe he does. I've not listened. I'm not. I mean, I'm somebody who's actually heard some Steven Seagal's musical output, so it's not. Well, but yeah, no, I know, so because you, know. Book, you booked him for his gig in Worthing, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he went down, went down a storm. <laughs> he did. The be Brighton, Chris. Well, <laughs> I hear it. I don't think Stephen Seagal's allowed in Brighton. I'd hope not, yeah. He wouldn't be allowed in Worthing, to be fair. Um, no, he actually did a gig in Worthing, I remember it. Oh, my God, really? It's, yeah. It's a, I just yeah. thought you were even bullshit. Like. No, 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 Stephen <laughs> Seagal and his band. Well, like his band. Yeah, with his blues band. Oh my God, like, the thing is, I wouldn't want to give him any money, but I'd be strangely tempted to go along and see that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my favourite genre, like rich white actors doing blues music. Uh, I think you'll find he's a reincarnation of um, one of the Buddhas. Well, and yeah, and to be fair, that's, you know, they've they've come out and confirmed that, haven't they? So, Yeah, someone who um, is definitely respected within yeah. the, <laughs> within the <laughs> higher echelons of the and is in no way um, suspected of money laundering, that kind of stuff. Oh, no, of course not. I could have told me dodgy. Cause, and, uh, yeah, and does Aikido, the most wonderful made-up of the martial arts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, he's, um, yeah, he's a tough guy. Yes. Would you try to start a fight with him? <laughs> oh, no, I mean, I'm sure he could quite easily beat me up. But, uh, I'm not sure, mate. <laughs> actually, no, probably not these days. He's a bit out of, bit out of wind, isn't he? I mean, like, if you can get a few hits in during the 10 minutes it takes him to get up out of his stool, then you're probably all right. <laughs> well, that's the thing, is because he's making these movies now, isn't there? It's just, yeah, he doesn't uh, actually... Get... It's like him and Michael Caine, he'll just, you know, come along and just sit in a chair. And to be fair, Michael Caine's like, well, he's 90 now, isn't he? I think he's yeah. finally, finally retired. Um, he said he doesn't really want to do movies anymore, did that. Um, but, you know, one of them's a great actor, and uh, one of them's a One of them's seen sick <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Awful piece of shit. Anyway, so da, 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 da. I mean, it would think, be. Do you know what? Like the fact he was doing. I know that uh, this is quite obvious, but I mean, it would be a brilliant press thing, right? The fact that he was doing it in Worthing would be like to say, "Oh, we need to take a picture of you in front of the pier or whatever." Like, yeah, yeah. And then throw loads of crumbs on him so he gets attacked by seagulls. That would be really good. Would well, that happen to Matthew Kelly when he came to Brighton Pier? I believe. Yeah, Where I know. But his were... second, but Matthew Kelly's second name isn't Seagull. <laughs> no, that's true. Oh, yes. Good, good point, yeah. So, and I reckon, and I reckon our aggressive South Coast seagulls could probably take him down. I think seagulls. they could, yeah. Seagulls, defeat seagulls. Yeah. seagull. Yeah. Because yeah, try your Aikido against the seagulls. It's not going to go well. And then you could get the rapper Bernie Seagull to um, do some rapping while it was happening. Yeah. Just to really tie, tie all the loose ends together. <laughs> Missed opportunity here. Yeah. This is well, why maybe, I should be a publicist. Maybe one day. For seagulls. I can't believe he's played a gig in Worthing. Yeah, of course he has. Yeah. I mean, not, not, he's not quite big enough to play Brighton. <laughs> no, he's not going to get in Brighton Centre, is he? I don't know, he might get he might get up at the um, the Richmond or something. It might be one of the more minor venues. The thing is, like, people in Brighton don't mind an ironic watch, which yeah. is why Chaz and Dave did really well down here. So maybe he'd get Concord too or something. Yeah, or, you know, he, he, he might do, like, an opening at the Albert or something they'll put on anyone, won't they? <laughs> <Yeah. Just> to... <laughs> <laughs> he could open for us at the Albert. <laughs> I don't, that's no disrespect to the Albert, one of the great music venues in Brighton. It's just they'll give, it every, they'll give everyone a chance, which I think is very good. Um, yeah, see some, some great bands down there. Um, uh, and some not-so-good bands like oh, ourselves. Oh, yeah, plenty, yeah. Or it's like, the, I mean, sadly, no longer with us, but the free buck again, it would always... Yeah. You could always get a gig down there, but uh, and you could always get a pint down there when you were fifteen, so that was good. Yeah, that was nice as well. <laughs> Sadly, shut down. Uh, can't go back now. No, sadly. Um, anyway, getting at it, we're we're not we're not going very well on our supposed new direction of information. I think we are. Okay, I think, I think well, this is good. good. It's going better than normal. 
Right, acrid puff of smoke in their bedrooms, only to find themselves being attacked and sexually assaulted by an invisible creature. I mean, that's having a bad night, isn't it? I don't know. So the attackers, what do they mean to it, I suppose? The attackers were said to be incredibly strong, and witnesses reported hearing the sound of flapping wings as the creature fled the scene. And the attacks did not stop there. I mean, that could be that could just be someone in like a long leather jacket running away, couldn't it? Yeah, could be a the kind of long could leather jacket. Goth. The kind of long leather jacket that a certain Steven Seagal might wear. Yeah. In fact. <laughs> and he's got he's got form, hasn't he, on the whole uh, assault front? I, yep, I, and, I understand. And the acrid scent. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, it's all uh, it's all adding up for that hair dye alone. That's like <laughs> a bat swing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you've got such such rich dark hair for your age, Mr. Yeah. Mm, smells like stables. <laughs> <laughs> Overwhelming smell of petroleum. <laughs> I think from your head for some reason. Um it, I mean, it does look like is, one of those is hair meant to, is hair that. meant to cry? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you reminded me now of um Giuliani. Giuliani, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, karma. Yeah. Right. The He's attacks... Ameri- America's mayor. Giuliani. Yeah. I mean, honestly, just it state kind of, went, of it. The absolute state of it. How it's it just... kind of a big fall from like the position he was in, like he was New York's mayor after nine eleven. How much money do you need? To, do, do you know More. what I mean? It's like you got all that legacy, you got millions, and you could just yeah. like bask in that. You know, even though it's you know not really, uh, not really deserved. But you could have just shut up and just but but no. It's I mean, with that kind of money, do you know what? Reputation. Like. You could, yeah, but <laughs> with that kind of money that he already has, hundreds of millions, like just set up your own independent movie studio and do a load of films where you're the star if you must. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, you could don't... be like, um, like Michael Flatley did that bomb movie that he put himself <laughs> in, didn't he? <laughs> Unfortunately, I think, I think he's got a terminal illness or something, which is why he, just, but he just thought, oh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a vanity okay, project yeah. with myself. as a yeah, well, good luck to him. Just do it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Why not? Yeah, because of, like the worst cut, like no one. I'll has give to it an watch. ironic watch one of these days when it's a film yeah, well, streaming no one, service. No one has to watch it, right? So you're no. not hurting anyone, but then you're also actually putting a few people in work, putting a few people in work as well. Yeah, why not? Yeah, if you want to bankroll it, no, no skin off my yeah. nose. Good luck to you. No problem. I do. I do like a vanity action movie, right? Um, well, we're planning to, aren't we? At some point. Yeah, it's got to be. Got to be done. Just speed Seriously. up the camera to make the attacks look <laughs> again very much like Stevens the Girl. Yeah. What's it going to be called? The Herbert Files. Yeah, and we were basically just going to film you in all the Michael Caine scenes from the Ip Chris Files, but then so it's like really weirdly jarring between like nineteen sixties and like four K filmed on both yeah. recreational grounds. Yeah, no, it's just me being inserted really awkwardly into scenes in the <laughs> press file. Just like riffing on Michael Caine's dialogue. <laughs> Be good. Um, yeah. Good. So, um, you know, check out our YouTube channel if you want to see that. Yeah. It literally does exist. <laughs> the YouTube channel, not the movie, just, you know, but one of these No, days. not the movie. Not yet. Right. We're just waiting for the weather to clear up. Yeah. Come the summer. Um, the attacks did not stay, stop there. In the 1980s, more reports of Papa Bauer attacks were reported, and again in the April of 95, and recently in 2000 and July 2001. Oh, so not, not for a while. Not for a while, according to this. And this is going up. He think, sated his lust. This article is from last year, I believe. Um, okay. Yeah, and one of the more interesting things to note is that these attacks often seem to coincide with political, um, political stress such as elections. For example, the okay. 1972 attacks followed the assassination of the country's president. So there's some controversy right. about this. Um, but, yeah, there's, you know, it, it's quite a, an interesting part of the whole kind of, you know, the the culture and, and, and mythos of the country, if you like, the, you know. It's um, like a poor, like a, it's, a, it's punishing the country or something? Well, there's theories that, um, you know, there's various theories that people have, have, have put forward um, that so, you know that, that um, when that it can be used for sort of fear mongering. So you right, get these okay. rumours spread around. That this, these things. You don't kind of, vote for me, Papa Bower. Yeah, no, exactly. It's like oh, you know, we live in a country where Papa Bowers are just running, running, you know, rampant. running rampant. You need to get a strong rampant government back Papa in. Papa Bowers. Um, 
<laughs> we need we need a government that's that's tough on Papa Bowers and, and tough the on the causes of Papa Bowers. Yeah. yeah. But then there's people who kind of um, have said that that's kind of like quite a, you know a reductive um, yeah you know thing, and it's kind of like tropes of you know. Um, but having said that, politicians spreading fear is not something that's unique to oh, well, any no, country's politicians. Literally, both like our, like anyone who's listening to this now, more than likely, you're, the government of your country is currently spreading fear. Yeah, <laughs> because that's how the world's gone. Yeah, we should be going through a cycle at the moment. Um, however, the recent attacks have come without any political turmoil, which makes it hard to understand the reason behind the crucial behaviour. And it does seem like there's, I mean. It, it's, it feels like this is one where, because it's interesting, there's there's not so much concrete sightings or kind of like a Mr. Blur and all the rest of it, but there definitely are. There's there's incidents, and it seems to be, I mean, some people have, have ascribed it to mass hysteria. Some people have ascribed it to kind of like um, sleep paralysis. Yeah. But it doesn't seem to be like there's one simple explanation um, okay. for for the for the causes of this. So... Um, well, and also there's, I mean, it could just be these are the reported ones, but, it, but there's not like a huge space of these cases happening. It's like, no, oh, like there was one, one in 72, one in 80, one, you know, do you know what I mean? It's not like there, there were five people who said in 1972 this had happened or whatever. No, it's, it's really hard to get concrete facts around this um, yeah. because it's not like well reported. Um, and so it's people kind of like, Inferring, I think. Well, it's not really news, is it? West. Well, no, exactly. And I think it's not. Um, it's not really <laughs> I'm something. joking. <laughs> I don't know. Page eight. That there's a. <laughs> oh, if there's a genuinely, yeah, like yeah. a giant back. Yeah, yeah, assaulting people. Then. But yeah, hospitals in Zanzibar have treated numerous broken ribs, bruises, and other injuries attributed to the Papa Bauer. One mentally ill man was hacked to death after confessing he confessing that he was a troublesome demon. During times right. when he terrorises the islands, whole families will often sleep arm to arm in front of their houses, seeking safety in numbers. In front of the houses, so he, yeah. so he just appears in the house. He doesn't like come in. It's just like he, he, he just kind of like seems to. Well, whether he sweeps down, I mean, it, there's no, they aren't like. Um, Again, it's really hard trying well, to see. you're asleep, right? So, how, you know, you wouldn't know. Yeah. And, you know until... Yeah, it just suddenly people get a sense of it when they're asleep. And, he, he, you know, however he's, however he's getting through, he's, um, yeah, all of a sudden you've, you know, got something on top of you and you're being assaulted. Um, and I assume and without a... protection? Yes. And I, well, I don't know. Whether he wraps it up is not something that's been... Uh, Any kind of... I'm assuming not. I mean, lubricant again, I or anything? I guess not. I, like, don't think, you know. I don't think he's a gentleman about it. But, um, oh dear. That's pr- sort, of pr- sort of prison style. Yeah, I mean... Um, I mean, not all... Pr- don't, don't get me wrong, right? Some prison romances are tender and carry on after prison, right? I've got no problem with that. But I'm talking about kind of that... that um, uh, sort of uh, Oz style prison yeah. romance. Yeah, terrific attack. Um... So was the guy's name Adab- Adabisi? The guy with the hat who was the king of doing that? Years. Yeah. Yeah, say about that. So many of the people who've been attacked by the Pobo are described there. Do you think Oz is worth a rewatch? Because it's um, available now to rewatch on Amazon. Yeah, I imagine it would be, to be honest with you. I, haven't, so I think I just kind of watched first... it. I don't know that I watched it all the way through. I. I think I, it's I kind watched of the back first the breakout HBO thing, wasn't it? Yeah, the first HBO thing to get sort of come over here, other than some, yeah, yeah, because nineties was really when we started getting some of that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it was on Channel behind. Four quite late at night, I think. Although I don't remember Baltimore Life on the Street. That was one I always liked. It was on Channel Four. Um, I don't know if that was a HBO one or not. Probably because Baltimore might have actually been the very first one. Baltimore, like, that was kind of like early nineties, I think. Um, mm. Anyway, that was, and that'd be worth a rewatch, I imagine. Um, yeah, anyway, so many of the people who've been attacked by the Papa Bauer described their experience as terrifying and life altering. Mm. Miaka Hamad, a peasant farmer in his mid 50s and a victim of the Papa Bauer's attacks in 95, had related to his ordeal to the media. I could feel it, Hamad said, something pressing okay. on me. I just couldn't, I just couldn't imagine what sort of thing was happening to me. 
you feel as if you were screaming with no voice. It was just like a dream, but then I was thinking it was this Papa Bawa and he'd come to do something terrible to me, something sexual. It was worse than what he does to women. Mm -hmm. So he's... So he doesn't mind men all, so he does men and women. Well, I mean, this is what, again, it's it's difficult to get full details. But yeah. this is what, and they seem to be more kind of worried about the attacks on men, because I, I guess there's kind of like some, you know. Stigma. I think, again, there's probably some stigma, I, I, again, because I think it's quite, a, um, you know, a strict Muslim country, and I think it's, it's frowned upon homosexuality. Um, and absolutely no homosexuality happens within strict Muslim countries, as we know. Yeah, of course, exactly. So this is again, this is one of the things that. So I think there'd be there'd be a kind of like a, a fear of that, I guess. But then again, this is well, again, we'll come on to it a bit on the end. But people think that actually, but through talking about this, you're able to, um, you know, um, people who are you know women and um, and and you know, gay men are, are able to sort of like start talking about sexuality by talking right. about, about this the kind papa of bar. the, the papa bar, yeah. Um. They claim that he did not believe in the Papa Bar or other spirits before the attack and suggest it's the reason he was attacked. I don't believe in spirits, so that's maybe why it attacked me. Maybe it will attack anybody who doesn't believe. So this is another core cool thing that comes out. Apparently he likes right. to... He, he, he goes out hunting for sceptics is one of the other... Right. The key rooms, <laughs> which is pretty, you don't believe in me, and it's like... <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> what, do you, what do you make of this? Yeah. <laughs> So the Papa Bauer has been compared to other phenomena from around the world, such as the medieval legends of succubi and incubi. So that's female and male spirits that were kind of yeah, sexually nice victims in bed at night. Although, you know, you hear stories as well about the you know, willing victims and things like that, I think, with succubi and incubi. Um, yeah. In Newfoundland, an ugly old woman found, well, an ugly old woman sexually molested men in a phenomenon known as hagging, apparently. There you go. Yeah, I quite, I quite like that term. Yeah. Well, what are you doing tonight? I'm going out hagging. <laughs> that really sounds like sort of um, sort of really a, a sort of toxic laddie term from the yeah, 90s, it does, it? Yeah. where it's like, oh, yeah, I hadn't pulled by the end of the night, so I decided to go hagging. <laughs> yes, I could imagine. Other similar reports describe vampires, formless black blobs, and extraterrestrials, mm. amongst other bizarre yeah. entities. Formless black blobs are my particular. Oh um, yeah! Shots. Oh yeah! Now, you, now you're talking. Ooh. Oh, clubs haven tonight. <laughs> the monster party. <laughs> Formless black form form blobs. Oh, well, Formless black wait. blobs are in. Yeah, I don't think I will be sharing that taxi <laughs> home. <laughs> so skeptics claim that these experiences are a result of a hypnagogic hallucination during a waking dream. Paralysis, a sense of being weighted down, floating sensations and encounters with otherworldly beings are all often unifying imagine, characteristics of the phenomenon. I imagine after being brutally sodomised by this Papa Bawa, once it had gone, you would have a kind of floating sensation because, yeah. you know, like, you know, because the pain would have stopped. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, like yeah, having I a massage, be, really. Like you have a phenomena that you'd have that we maybe wouldn't tie in with with uh, sleep paralysis. But yeah, that seems to be one of the explanations people give. It could just be, I mean, not not all of the um, not all of the cases apparently sort of point to sleep paralysis. But that's one of the theories that's been uh, been, been yeah. Well, there. I mean, it's always a good good one to have. You know, it's always yeah, it's come up anything in other cases, that happens like while you're while time. you're asleep or whatever. You know, yes, yeah. sleep paralysis is always a uh, thing like with hauntings and stuff. Exactly. Despite this, the legend of the Papa Bawa continues to be a source of fear and fascination for many people in Zanzibar and around the world. Some people believe that the Papa Bawa is a real supernatural creature with the power to harm and terrorise its victims, and others see it as a manifestation of fear and anxiety in a culture, uh, in a culture with a history of political and social upheaval. And one theory is that the Papa Bawa is a product of collective fears and anxieties that are projected onto a supernatural entity. This theory holds that the creature is not an actual physical being, rather a manifestation of people's fears and anxieties. And that theory would explain why he appears to, um, or he seems to appear during times of political and social turmoil. Yeah, that's a really interesting bit, isn't it? Mm. That it's kind of like... Um, like that it manifests during during a political sort of or social upheaval. So, I mean... If you were that way inclined, that you kind of 
you know, strongly believe in spirits and stuff, then, you know, you could, then people like that would probably say, well, you know, it's the, it's it's been collectively manifested by, what what are those things called? Not homunculus. What's um, something that's manifested by sort of collective? Or oh, by belief. Um, is yeah. it a tulpa or something? Yeah, tulpa, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe that's... Someone's belief, what, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like a... Um, Double gang yeah. type thing, yeah. Um, yeah. Others argue that Papa Bauer is a reflection of deeply ingrained cultural beliefs and practices around spirits, magic, and the supernatural in Zanzibar and the surrounding region. Even though the majority of people in Zanzibar are Muslim, they also practice traditional African religions that believe in spirits and supernatural beings that can interact with humans. Many people still fear the Papa Bauer and take steps to protect themselves from it. For example, some people will recite special prayers or wear amulets to ward off the creature. Others choose to sleep outside, believing the Papa Bauer is less act, li- less likely to attack them in open spaces. No witnesses. <laughs> Indeed. Doesn't want witnesses. Did your um, friend who went to Zanzibar um, wear any particular special amulets to protect them from the Papa Bauer? Not that I know of. I haven't, I haven't, we haven't <sighs> talked about Papa Bauer, so I have to find stupid, out. Stupid yeah. Westerner. Yeah, like, Got lucky, didn't they? Well, turns out. Um, or did they? Well, Do they have a haunted look in their eyes when they described it? No, okay. No, but you know, who knows? Um, many people um, still... Oh, you've got the ambulance. Yeah. Important to note that regardless of whether the Papa Bauer is a real or fictional creature, the stories of sexual assault that are attributed to it are serious and should be taken seriously. Shouldn't dismiss or trivialise the experiences and trauma of individuals who reported such attacks. Oh, there's a link yeah. there. Let's see where that goes. Um and that goes to UFO shot down over Russia for some reason. Oh, okay, good. Um, even if Excellent the attacks link. are attributed to a supernatural creature. In conclusion, the Papa Bauer is a fascinating and intriguing creature from the folklore of Zanzibar. While some people believe it's real, others see it as a manifestation of fear and anxiety. I mean, he's kind of repeating himself there. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, so one, I was just going to say as well, so... There's got a couple of other links, but there's one on here. I'm just, so there was a book written by Katrina Thompson, Hopper Bauer, Tanzanian Talk, Global Misreadings. Um, now it's 23 quid, so I've not gone out and actually bought the book, but I've got an, what? Sort of, an extract, some extracts here from a from a. Well, even with the massive amount of profit we make off the podcast, you no, could have um, hoarded in that, mate. It would have been tax deductible at the end of the year. We could have given the receipt to our accountant, Mister. Um, Williamson's and that's true. Um, so yeah, this is compellingly. Thompson suggests because talk about Papa Bauer is inherently sexual, after all, the subject is a demonic rapist. Yeah, it allows marginalized people, such as women and homosexual men, to discuss taboo topics and engage in subtle criticism of sexual normativity, male hegemony, and political leadership. Papa Bauer, Thompson, oh, here we go. The woke karate, yeah. yeah. Isn't Do you know what? Maybe it's just a demon that rapes people. Oh, trying to, but, you know, make it something that's not. Yeah, sex pest demons can't allowed to just be sex pest demons anymore. They've got to be some manifestation of. Oh, uh, well. Uh, Papa Bo has gone woke. Oh, dear. Anyway, she argues he's an appropriate. Topic. When will it end, Neil? That's what I want to ask you. When will it end? Yeah. Oh, you well, know, we believe, is... it, we believe in family values, we believe in. Critical race theory, banning, like, get rid of that. We believe in the Bible, and we believe that the Papa Boa is simply a rapist demon. Yeah. Not this wokery. Well, I'm, I'm listening I'm listening to all sides of the conversation, Chris, but um, what have you seen recently? It was, I think it was, um, they did the Super Bowl recently, didn't they? And yeah. apparently loads of people have got up in arms that the NFL's gone woke because they're all annoyed at Taylor Swift or something. Yeah, she's going out with someone anyone. who was one of the players in the final, yeah. and basically they thought that she was going to, during the Super Bowl, even though she wasn't performing, was going to come out as pro Biden to, to try and uh, destroy oh, yeah. destroy Trump, which so didn't even, happen. Even though she didn't, they were still furious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 like it was all just bullshit conspiracy. It was like, oh, I That's... don't even, I don't even reckon they're really going out together. It's just to you know, get rid of Trump. I mean, you know, 
probably the 90 court cases might have. Why hasn't she got, uh, someone else pointed out on Twitter or X, whatever you're calling it these days, you know, she should have 12 kids by now. She should have 12 kids yeah. by now. She was a real American. <laughs> Not that she's got like a massive career that she has to worry about or anything like that. No, and also, that, I mean, that also doesn't make sense. because oh, I mean, this must be the difficulty, right? Because on one hand, they don't want non-white people out reading white people, right? Because of the great replacement theory. But if Taylor Swift did have 12 kids, they're going to be liberal cucks. So, you know, that's, yeah. that's you know, that's 12 votes to uh, to the woke Karate, isn't it? So it's tough, isn't it? Can't win, can you? Can't win. It's a hard world. Um, Good to yeah, see that so... Trump's now got to pay, like, 600 million or something. <laughs> like, yeah, it's good. Know. I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, good luck getting any money out of that, that one. Um, what are you going to see? Well, he's, he's, well, he's, well he's known, selling like, trainers what? now, isn't he, for like 400 Gold trainers. <laughs> yeah, they look nice. Mm. <laughs> and they've got like tea on them. And gold yeah. trainers with tea on them, I instantly thought, oh, Mr. T trainers, nice. <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. mind some Mr. T trainers. But oh, that'd Mr. be all right. Yeah, but not, not Trump trainers. Mr. T wouldn't what? support Trump anyway. I just Trump think, anyway. you know... Having your trainers endorsed by any presidential candidate is just a bit naff, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, well, I mean, know. I don't, I, I don't know who makes them. I don't know. It's not like oh, the, the worst of the sweatshops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, might be not probably that's probably true of all trainers, but uh, yeah, no, I'm sure he, he found an especially egregious company that nobody else will deal. He with. set up one. Yeah. I bet, they make, like, I bet it's prisoners in, where's the worst prison? I don't know. Russia, presumably. Yeah. Probably Russian prison. That was the last well, thing that um, that guy who was trying to stand against Putin Navalny. did before he died. He was making Trump trainers. <laughs> Him, it, like, there was... Stitching the American flag onto some... There was, like, there's about 50 people tops. who haven't... 50 people left in Russian prisons who haven't been thrown into the meat grinder yet, yeah. and they're making Trump trainers. It's a big jarring shift. So Papa Bauer, Thompson argues, is an appropriate topic for such transgression. So this is again, you know, talking about, um, you know, sexuality. Sexuality in with much, you and me, Mr. Neil. In that much of the see? talk occurs within culturally sanctioned discursive forms like Utani, which is a ritualized form of humour. Stories about spirits and spirit possession. Within those domains, Swahili speakers explicitly reference the unmentionable, describing, for example, the enormity of a demon's penis. And prohibited Whoa, sexual acts, sexual hello. intercourse. I mean, there's been rumours it's up to six foot, Chris, in some, <laughs> which is, yeah, I'd be in trouble walking, wouldn't he? Because he's only oh, a little bat fella as well, so he's he's rolling yeah. that up on the thighs, I believe. No, right, so the thing is, right, it's... Um, so we know that that's not physically possible because... Well, well I demon. think, again, that's probably like a humour thing, isn't it? It's like that, yeah. that, you know, real childish... Because there was that, I remember... Ooh. Remember in the early internet days, there was um, the guy who had the longest penis in the world, right? And he was famous for it. Um, but he couldn't get an erection because yeah. too much, it needed too much blood too much, and, he would, yeah. and he would faint. So, you know, just shows you. There you go. Careful what you wish for, Neil. I know that you've been wishing on a star for the world's largest penis for a while now. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd erect some scaffolding. Who were? Do you? Um, yeah. Some and then getting a couple of, of you know, blood, but get an IV drip going on. Yeah, or like um, a dialysis machine, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, <Yeah>. ladies. <laughs> Start a little dialysis machine. Horrific, horrific sidewalk. <laughs> Strapped around <laughs> the testes. Yeah. Sitting there, in a a full of blood. sitting there in a wheelbarrow with <laughs> <laughs> that on a lazy Susan in front. <laughs> Hello, ladies. See anything you like? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Next. Absolutely not. Left swipe. Right. Oh, I, I, oh, I can see you. I can see you're throwing up with sexual excitement. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So um, six foot cock. Good. Yeah, well, that anyways, was. Um, well, there you go. So, I think we've, we've pretty much covered it there. The Aloko so, yeah. also uh, didn't the Aloko also have quite a large penis? 
I, think, I do know we've done something similar to this before because I did vaguely recall. Was the Aleko kind of like another um, sex pesty one? So, yeah, but it, yeah, it kind of. So I yeah. think they might have said like, yeah, he's like the Papa Bar or whatever. Because I know I've heard of this one before, and I was wondering. It's a different. It's a different gig. Like it, he's yeah. more of a. He more seduces. Oh, okay. He's a bit more like vampire. Yeah, sort of. Um, I don't know. Go back and listen to the episode. It's quite it depends, a good one. Oh, it depends on where you get your vampire law from, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's not... I can't keep track of all of these in my head, Chris. I know, Neil. Yeah. I know. But yeah, so there you go. The Papa Bauer is a, a horrific little fella. Um, I'll tell you what, I listened back to the Sweeney Todd episode this week. and okay. it's, I, it's actually good. But it's surprisingly, um, not many people listen to it. Which I, you know, but I would have thought. I thought Sweeney Top people would be up for that, but yeah. There you go. Who knows? They've seen they've seen the film and they reckon they know it all. They don't know that it was potentially a real person, but maybe not. Well, there you go, listener. You know, give it a go. You haven't listened to it. So is that is that what we've got for Papa Bauer? That's pretty much it for Papa Bauer, I would say. Um, Yeah. So you know, there's not a lot of concrete stuff, but it's obviously. I mean, it's definitely one where, you know, there's that there is a kind of like a you know, a belief in there, but it seems to be more kind of, you know, really wedded into the folklore and all the rest of it of the, of the country. So, What do you think it's about, Neil? What's your read on it? Um, I, think it well, I think it probably is a mixture of things like sleep paralysis, hysteria, and then people being, like, agitated about, you know... So what's interesting... Being so sexually it's, assaulted. So, it, so it, what's interesting kind to of me is... Of a, you know, because we kind of gloss over that last bit a little bit, but I think what's interesting is the fact that they've got, like, within their culture, they have this kind of form of humour, right, yeah. kind of rigid form of humour. So they'll talk about the Papa Bauer having a big cock or whatever. Yeah. But then that could, you know, but if it, but if it, you and your mate, like, or, you know, you, you and your friend, like, make me, maybe you're gay or bisexual or whatever, yeah, exactly. you can talk about the Papa Bauer and it's a bit, it's a bit like a wink and a nod. To, yeah. you know, that, and that's kind of like a codified way of talking about sexual things, which is what it's saying. Um, no, exactly. Very it's much like, they used, like they used to have Polari in England, where there was like a, yeah. a, a secret language that gay people owned, sort of. Romanist really slang, but a lot of gay of, people and the theatre people used it as well. Yeah. Yeah, and you used to get it on, like when you listen back, you get, you get it on kind of old comedy shows and stuff and people wouldn't have got what it was, but now yeah. you listen to it and it's like, it's really subversive and quite funny. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's part of it. I mean, it's interesting that it happens at times of sort of national crisis as well. Yeah, it seems to be, there seems to be a, a bunch of different kind of causes and effects and depending on who's, you know, some people use it as a kind of, you know, pushing against boundaries, whereas other people, it's kind of like more reflecting anxieties that people have about, yeah, society, what have you, so. Yeah. I mean, I think when we, you know, it's like, it's like I kind of say about our, our government, I guess, it's kind of a similar thing, you know, where the, the government, and, and how sort of all sort of companies and stuff are now just worse now and we get worse service for more money and like and also we don't you don't have a choice like you know water you need water and they're all privatized and they're fuck and yeah. it's like you know at least look me in the eyes when you're fucking me do you know what i mean it's it's like that kind of <laughs> so yeah. want... well no to be fair though look at the uh, the water company one of them recently came out and they said they're going to stop pumping sewage into a lake by 2030 Sounds oh, that's nice good. isn't it yeah finally uh, right, yeah. let's go through our scoring system, Neil. So, spookiness. Yeah, I think this one's pretty spooky. So, um, and it's you know manifesting all sorts of fears for people. But yeah, having something um, just suddenly manifest in your house and assault you, I think that's pretty um, pretty spooky. Um, Chance to be a fine thing. Or, or you know, or not? So you might say there, Chris, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, no. It's just, I think it's just, I'm just lonely. Again, with the whole, it's the thing whenever we come with these ones with the sleep paralysis um, bits or, or something where it's something like that where you you know you can't control it. I think any anything where you're um, where you're powerless to prevent it, I think is all inherently makes it a bit more, more scary and spooky for me. So I'm going to give it an eight. Yeah. So um, yeah, the manifestating in your house, the fact it gets you in your sleep, the sexual assault, like none of these are good things. Um, it doesn't kill you. 
but no, maybe a part maybe part of you dies inside or maybe it awakes part of you who knows yeah. right mm-hmm. but um i don't know it's it's got a sexual agenda so that you know that um that makes it it's it's kind of a power play in that um yes. so um and it you know it sounds like it's quite scary looking and stuff as well with or without the eight, the six foot penis so um yeah, I'll go with you and give it an eight nil. So believability. Um, do I believe that the Papa Bar exists? Um, the creature itself, probably not. Um, I'd, I'd need some harder evidence to be able to fully commit to believing that it exists. But do people believe it exists? Um, I think that some people do, absolutely. And I think it's kind of uh, serving a societal purpose in a way. Mm. Um, so I think some people do, some people don't. I think that some people pretend they do so that they can wink and not talk about some other stuff. So, um, I'm going to give it a six now. Yeah, it's similar kind of theory. I think, um, again, not about necessarily as also believability about whether or not we do or don't believe it. Obviously we, you know, we're not close enough and all the rest of it. Um, but yeah, it does seem to be, um, sort of tapping to some generalized anxiety now, obviously, you know, we heard from the guy who got attacked himself, but he was a sceptic. Um, so obviously there's a lot of scepticism out there as well in, in, in Zanzibar as well. But um, yeah, it also sounds like there's quite a lot of quite a lot of people sort of believe you're not on the ground or whether it's, you know, again, a form of coping with generalised anxiety and stuff like that about how, how things are going along in the country. Or as you say, people, you know, claiming to so they can talk about other things. So I'm going to give it a seven. Seven. Okay, narrative premise, Neil. Yeah, I think there's there's a there's a fair bit to this. I mean, um, I, the fact that it goes after skeptics um, mm-hmm. sort of just manifests itself. I think you know tying in the whole um, you know very much, yeah, very much the Alex Jones of Zanzibar, really. Yes, <laughs> similar similar looking as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you could you could imagine him with an eye patch as well. Um, yeah, and a gorgeous thick neck. Oh yeah. <laughs> I imagine yeah, if you got it on radio, it'd be a bit ranty like that. Yeah, kind of power. Um, yeah, no, I think there's there's a there's a fair bit of um, of meat to this one. It's kind of a, you know, good, I mean, it, it's interesting because it depends which angle you want to go at it from. You know, whether it's the kind of the, the myth itself and kind of like you know how people you know respond to that and use that as part of their beliefs in the sort of society. And I think you know, it sounds quite interesting those little aspects of um, Tanzanian culture as well, like the ritualized humor and things. Um, so yeah, I think you could you could um, you could do quite an interesting story on this. I'd, I'd be quite interested in to see if there was someone to write a fictional account of this. So um, yeah, I'm going to give it a seven as well. So um, I so do you know what? Like it's it is interesting because the reasoning, the reasons behind it, and stuff, um, and all the different theories. Like it's it's complex. It's got a mm. complexity and it's it's quite deep. So I think it's actually like I mean, obviously, like I mean the a monster that sexually assaults people, right? Not like that itself isn't that in. I mean, it, you know, it's no. not it's not brilliant. Off putting, if anything. Yeah, slightly off putting. But um, the the other stuff around, kind of, you know what it means to different people and that kind of thing. I think it's very, I think it's really interesting actually. So I'm going to give it an eight now and reach. So I had heard of this, but I think it's because this, you know, it's my job to, to know these things. Um, but I don't think it's huge. I think it's known in that area. It's probably known in Mozambique and stuff as well. Um, but I don't think it's got a massive reach and it's not that old. So, I mean, I can't really give it more than the four. Yeah, and no, I tend to agree. And I think it's actually probably more like a, a unique bit of Tanzanian folklore. It's not intended to sort of travel, really. Um, it, it's, yeah, other than as the most spurious details, I think it, it's, you know, looking at this a little bit and trying to find some sources. Um, I imagine there's a lot more to it. If you were like, you know, if, if you, you were in Tanzania, brands. you probably, you probably yeah. un, you know, probably be a hell of a lot more cultural reference that you'd, you'd understand. And I suspect a lot of this is not available on the internet or the, um, you know, it's more word of mouth. So I suspect, you you know, you you'd understand a lot more if you're actually living in Tanzania. But having said that, because of that, it's not really spread out any any kind of further other than the more spurious details. So, yeah, all for me as well. 
So that is a pretty high 52. So not too bad. Um, so the admin stuff, if you want to email us, please do. Um, we respond to all emails unless um, they're horrible. And that's at urb.legends.podcast.gmail.com or at Legends Urbane on the Twitters. Uh, and, you know, give us a comment and a rating or whatever if you've enjoyed it. Um, slightly shorter episode this week, but, um, yeah, I, I, you know, that's a, that's an interesting one. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm glad we've looked at it. Um, so, that you know, I haven't really got anything left to say, so I will just uh, wish you all a good week and, uh, you know, keep safe. And, uh, yeah, goodbye from me and goodbye from him. Goodbye. <laughs> See you later. See you later. It's an urban legend. Oh, yeah. I don't get it, you great. Oh, I'd give it my best. Point the word, please, John. Oh, it's Steve, you so red. You owe me a monkey. Get it, yeah.